like many Pinoys, you know, I grew up in a Catholic household, went to Catholic elementary school, went to Catholic high school, went to Catholic college. So I, I've been kind of exposed to that. Uh, did everything from altar boy, sacristan, you know, the, the, the typical. You were altar yeah, boy. Absolutely. No. Years. Years. It, it's it's it was it was a big definitely a big part of my life. Um, though it, it would, I would say it faded as I got older, um, and mainly because of life experience, um, and then the people that I've always looked up to in because of their faith have constantly let me down, and because of that, it has tarnished my own kind of zest for organized religion or my excitement for it. In fact. I wouldn't even say faded. I almost outright despise it at this point. <gasps> oh um, my god! And again, we can talk about that probably a little bit. Yeah. This podcast is powered by Podcast Network Asia and Podmetrics. Welcome to the Narador Podcast, everybody. Come on in. My name is Sam, and it is my delight to welcome all of you to the show. And please say hello to my friends. We have. Uh, Brother J. Paul Hernandez, of course, is lay preacher at the feast. Pastor Dennis C. is head preacher. Not head preacher. Oh, my gosh. Can I start over? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> the nation should come in. Okay, three, two, one. Welcome to the Narador Podcast, everybody. Come on in. My name is Sam, and it is my delight to welcome you to every single episode of the show. Please say hello to my beautiful friends. Brother Jay Paul is lay preacher at the feast. Pastor Dennis is head pastor at Victory Green Hills. Instructor Harold Rasho is instructor at New Heaven and New Earth Shinshinji Church of Jesus. We're so excited to be joined by our guest today. Before I introduce him though, just a quick reminder that we are partnered with Versus all this month of December. All you have to do is write to us. Tell us about your conversion story, your coming to the faith, your coming to Jesus story. We wanna hear all about it. The Narrow Door Podcast at gmail.com is our address and we wanna hook you up with shirts, caps, emergency bags from Versus. This bag is like, do you know this is an international emergency standard emergency bag that means it's legit i think is what it means there's 51 items in there um everything you could possibly need during an emergency and it's super cute so check it out at versus ph on instagram saved by versus.com online okay all right let us get to our guest today so not too long ago I introduced you guys to my first ever radio partner, Sam YG, and joining us today is my last, okay? He is brilliant, he is smart, he is funny, he is the heart and soul behind the radio institution that is Good Times, Mo Twister is here. Woo! Hi, everybody. Oh, my goodness. This is a great little setup you got going here. I'm so proud of you. I know that you, I remember you kind of reached out to me saying that you were going to cook a podcast up and stuff like that. I didn't know it was going to be this impressive looking. I mean, I, I guessed on a lot of podcasts. I'd say I'd guess weekly on a bunch because I love it. You know, I love podcasts. I've been doing it for a long time and I, I, I want people to kind of get into this medium. But this might be the most impressive organized one I've been on. This looks great. Are I'm you serious? Here. Yeah, sincerely. But I like I like guesting on the I like guesting on the um you know the beginner stuff like people who are just trying to get in maybe to help them out a little bit so uh i i tend to be exposed to a lot of that so every now and then when you get here and there's graphics and there sounds like there was a producer in the background and there's multi cameras and the colors are sharp and the ring lights and the makeup I mean, this looks great so congratulations Sam. i'm really really happy for you i hear this is like oh. 15 episodes in that's amazing very good Thank you so much. That means a lot coming from you. I can't really take credit for any of that. This is all Podcast Network Asia. Thanks, guys. And also interesting coming from you looking like you're about to fly a plane or something. Yeah, that is I, the most professional I, setup. I spend a lot of time kind of uh, in flight simulating. Uh, I, flight simulators. <laughs> I enjoy aircrafts. I, I enjoy aviation, something that I've been super like... Uh, into since I was younger. So my computer here is also a nice little cockpit as well. Get little dials and gadgets and just makes me feel like I'm in the air. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I don't it's doubt traveling it. Traveling in a time that not a lot of traveling is going on. So it's very good. 
I know that, you know what? Yeah, I just want to ask you, like, what is life like in the States? I mean, it looks kind of crazy from this part of the world with yeah. how the pandemic is being handled, how there are riots going on right now, the wow. election that just happened. I mean, what's it like over there? It's, it's pretty bad. I mean, because obviously we have terrible leadership here. Uh, I'm sure you guys know what that looks like. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Joe. <laughs> Harold didn't like that. He's not a free um, I mean, you know what ter- terrible leadership looks like. Mm-hmm. And what trickles down, though, more here than I think Sa'at, and I'm not sure if that's true or not, well, maybe we'll discuss it a little bit later, is that, you know, a lot of people, the thing with America is this. You can't tell them what to do, right? A lot of Americans have that mindset that hey, this is my freedom. I was born and I and I wake up every morning with the freedom to to kind of decide my fate for the day and for my life. So when you have that mentality, and it tends to be very me first, and then you couple that with a population that's third in the world, uh, you know, 300 plus million people, you're going to get the problems that we're having when a global pandemic comes around, because obviously the leadership is bad, the population is great, the mindset is not good either, and then boom, you're going to get 250 upwards, a quarter million people dead, and then, you know, the infections in the millions. That's the problem here. Uh, right. overly bad without actually talking too much about it and getting overly political. That's how I feel. I feel the problem is cultural leadership, and then maybe a little too much freedom, which is is a good thing. Except in moments like this, where really you have to kind of mandate people to. I'm sorry. I know it's a tough year. I know you want to go outside. I know you want to travel. I know you want to hang out with your friends. Can't do it right now because um, science says so. And, and right. just push back there. And when you have yeah. when you have that kind of population and that amount of pushback, you're going to get a problem like this. Yeah. yeah, no, that is it in a nutshell. My goodness, I feel like I'm back on good times. Not how <laughs> <Yeah. it is. laughs> We're nicer here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little rougher. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yes, this is the Narrow Door podcast. Just in case people are forgetting. Yeah. All right. And this is a Christian <laughs> podcast. Okay. Sorry, you're not going to say any bad words. <laughs> You know what? I'm really pleasantly surprised that I, I actually, I don't know what I was expecting. I mean, when I asked you to be on my Christian podcast, I guess I wasn't expecting you to be so game because you super were like, it yes. took you no time to say yes. Right. And, and, and I, I think it's because I well, I, I always find the topic interesting, no matter what, again, my faith is, which I'm sure again, we'll get into in a little bit. I always find these types of conversations and topics to be very interesting because it's a big, pretty it's a pretty dominating part of our lives, no? And then, of course, there's the personal angle that you're, you're a very good friend of mine. Uh, we've been through shows together and stuff like that. So, you know, my, I'm always going to say yes to any kind of support that any of your endeavors need. But but at the same time as well, you know, I'm sure we're going to have a great episode. I'm sure it's going to be really interesting. And that's not really because of me, but I, I'm sure it's just because, you know, we can cook up a, a pretty decent conversation I think people are going to be interested uh, with. So, yeah, of, of course, I'll be here for you that. Yeah, you know what? I think, though, that it's mostly going to be because of you. Because yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, um, somebody asked me, hey, can you get Mo to guest on your podcast? Not knowing that I had already scheduled you to record with us today. Okay. So I told this person, oh, my goodness, it's funny you ask because Mo is actually coming to join us tomorrow. And I realized that Yes, in the three something years that we've done radio together, we've mm-hmm. talked about many different things. Faith, not really. It wasn't that kind of show, you know? Right. And there's a lot of curiosity, I think, around your faith life, if you even have one. Do you believe in God? What is your internal life like? I don't think you really talk about this. So if you want me to start then a little bit, just a kind of a little bit of a background. Um, like many Pinoys, you know, I grew up in a Catholic household, went to Catholic elementary school, went to Catholic high school, went to Catholic college. So I, I've i been kind of exposed to that. Uh, did everything from altar boy, sacristan, you know. The, the, the typical- you were altar yeah. boy? Absolutely. No. Years. Years. Um, all my friends worked at the rectory, you know, like growing yeah. up and stuff. So it, it's, it's, it, was, it was a big, definitely a big part of my life. Um, though it, it would, I would say it fade, it faded, sorry, it fades as I get older or it faded as I got older. Um, and mainly because of life experience. Um, and then when you're young, I think, I I think you believe in a little bit more of, um, 
the supernatural uh, fantasies. Um, just, you know, you watch movies and you're, you're impressed by them. And then when you get a little older, it's not that this is a fantasy, right? But it's the people that I've always looked up to in because of their faith have constantly let me down. And because of that, it has tarnished my own kind of not belief in it because I absolutely believe in God, but my zest for organized religion or my excitement for it. In fact, I wouldn't even say faded. I almost outright despise it at this point. Oh, oh um, my God. And again, we wow. could talk about that probably a, a little bit. Yeah. With, with, again, again, not, I know despise is such a strong word, right? But it is that kind of hurt, that kind of disappointment, that kind of letdown that can make me say the word despise and somewhat mean it, you know? I don't think you're alone in feeling that way towards their church, especially now. Oh my goodness. I mean, you know, in the Catholic church, there's so much going on. Mm, that is yeah. just so disappointing. You know, just recently we were talking about a pastor from Hillsong who came out admitting to being uh, unfaithful to his wife. And so as a church member looking up to their leader and them admitting to sins like this, I'm sure super disappointing. But can we just go back to your experiences with people you looked up to who let you down? Like what happened? Who were these people? I mean, it, it, it's, it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do the, the, the typical Mo thing. I'm going to name names. No, because I <laughs> on the radio show, no problem. Right. Who are you? What happened to you? No, I'm observed <laughs> here. Okay. But, but it's, it's pastors. It's people who are publicly just the greatest Christian. And then I, I see them texting my girlfriend, you know, and and, oh. and you, you get what I mean? It's like, why is, isn't that dude like supposed to be the most famous Christian in the in, in, in showbiz? You know, my friend, um, there's a lot of that. And then there's my own, again, person. I, I've been through some really rough things in life. Not not rough in the sense of like crime and poverty or anything like that. But I've been through a lot of dramatic experiences and when I looked to the people or when I expected the people who were most, how do I say this, uh, very public, you know, within their faith and, and, you know, leaders in their church, I see them completely go the opposite way. That's when I go, I'm out. I can be specific if you want me to be specific without saying names, but just to understand what I'm trying to say. But it, it, again, it's it's really more that it's just. I expected a lot from you guys because you guys promote so much goodness and this and that only to kind of see the rotten side, um, you know, in, in, in the back. So dun, 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 I'm, 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 I tell you, it is heartbreaking, 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 heartbreaking. Truly. Yeah. yeah. The, the hypocrisy, like it's intense. Induces, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. And, the you know what, I, if I may, and again, I, I hate to talk so much, and I haven't had given Harold Dennis and Jay Paul Harris a chance, but um, I, I look at it now like the government. We're in, I know not every church leader is bad. Of course not, right? I know that every politician isn't bad. But when there has been enough disappointment, you can almost collectively go, okay, the government sucks. The government's bad. Even though that's unfair to those who are good that are in it, it's just so overwhelmingly corrupt and so overwhelmingly deflating that we sometimes, and poor logic would say we just kind of i personally just kind of group them together as just bad and i'm out you know that that's kind of where i'm at right now at 43 years old yeah. okay okay yeah i think we painted a pretty clear picture of where this question is coming from yeah 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 totally but can i also just go deeper into your relationship with god then you're not part of a church you're not a fan of organized religion but you do believe in god so how does this work what is, and, and yeah, i still what, the church oh, you like, do? I want my kids to still be able to have that hope and to have that um you know that that feeling that i had when i was younger which is oh it's real and it's good and it's amazing and it it, it fills your heart and, and trust me, for as much as I dislike it and despise it, I have a call-in advice show. And when people call in and they want to change what's going on in their life, I tell them, find Jesus. It works. It works for a lot of people. And if it worked 
it works for them, go do it. Go to church. Talk to your pastor. Absolutely. Look for it. My experience shouldn't dictate that everything. it's always bad for everybody. No. I tell them go because I still do know people who've had an immense turnaround in their life because they found the Lord. You know, they found Jesus and it worked for them. And I will always promote it for that. And that's the same reason why I would still go and make sure my kids go so they can feel it. Even though I'm sitting there going, <laughs> this is okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not on my phone or anything, but you know, I'll listen to the songs. The songs are fun, you know, right? It's okay. <laughs> the, the guys, he can really sing. You know, I'm just really there for the entertainment value. If the pastor's <laughs> funny, I'll take it as a stand up comedic act, and you know, more than really sitting there with my eyes closed praying. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't do that ever, ever. But, but, and, and, when, and when everyone else is doing it, you know, you know, I'll just look down, but I'm not I'm looking at my shoes, you know, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you, so you want that for your children. You yeah. do not have that in your own life. Do you have any interest in finding that for yourself again? I would love to. I don't expect that to happen because I don't think all of those things that have disappointed me are going to change. It, it, you know, right? I, I mean, there have been bad church leaders for hundreds and hundreds of years. What what says that it's all of a sudden they're going to stop and be great yeah. all of a sudden, right? So yeah. I don't expect to be kind of wowed until unless I see a miracle in front of my face. Like, you know, something really, truly life-altering. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That was so energizing. Um, but, yeah, no. I mean, as, as, as the current pace dictates no. Okay. Yeah. You know what? It's very interesting to me that you are our guest on episode 40. The number 40 <laughs> is a really auspicious number in the Bible. Did you know that? No, I, I didn't. Yes. Explain. Yes. Like Jesus fasted for 40 days, right? Okay. The Israelites roamed the desert for 40 years. Ano pa, guys? Ano pa ba yung 40? Marami to eh. It's... And it's the age that when you hit it, everything starts to hurt physically. <laughs> <laughs> you start waking up like, my God, what's that pain? I didn't do anything. I'm hurting. 40. <laughs> no, but the, the yeah. number 40 is super significant. So I don't know. I feel like maybe this is what's going to happen. Maybe you're going to be energizing. I'm excited. Let's find out. <laughs> okay. So, right. Let's get to the meat of today's episode then. How do we keep our faith when our leaders fall? This is, I think, a question that a lot of people in the faith are asking mm. right now. I think we know not to put our faith on people, right? Um, yeah, who wants to elaborate on this? Yeah. Go for it. Well, I could start. Um, ha have a lot of painful experiences. Had ministry friends, grew up with in youth ministry, became pastors had a moral mm -hmm. failure, you know, all those things really pained me a lot. It, it, it like, it was so hard for me. You know, I think every time, you know, I hear sometimes the Hillsong pastor, I don't know the guy, so it's not that painful, but to have somebody in your circle who f falls into sin, it's something different. As what Mo was saying, some of the church leaders or people who pastored him and he runs to them and he sees the, the flaws of human beings, it's kind of hard, you know, and it, it, maybe it has happened to me more than five times, you know, but again, it's what you said, Sam, I think it's going back to the object of my faith and the reality that I also am aware that I could be one of those guys. If I don't, if I don't fix and I don't walk with and build my relationship with Jesus, I'm one sin away from, from doing stupid things that could destroy so many people and lead to a lot of traumatic experiences mm -hmm. to the congregation. So mm -hmm. I'm aware of that. And, mm -hmm. and it's just the hard thing to do. It's leadership. It goes back to leadership, right? And I think we're given that responsibility as a shepherd and it's harder for us. The Bible says those who teach the word, you know, the standard goes a little bit higher. And, and again, I'm aware of that and, and it's hard and that's why we live by grace. But what I'm thankful for is that even when I read scripture, you know, uh, scripture does not negate all the wrong things David did or Joseph did or Moses did or Abraham did. Some of them were adulterers, criminals, you know, uh, the, the disciples who spent three years with Jesus betrayed him, right, and, and denied him. So I think 
the Bible is telling us this is life. This is journey. This is a journey with Christ. And it's not going to be perfect. It will never be perfect. It will never come to a point like it's paradise here on earth. Right? And that's why Jesus told us to pray, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven because that's the goal, but that's never going to ha happen here. It's going to happen when Jesus comes again. And so we're part of that ecosystem. And Mo's been part of that ecosystem. I'm still part of that ecosystem where we know it's not going to be perfect. And thus, we would always say in church, you know, there's no perfect church. When you join that church, it becomes imperfect because all of us, we live flawed lives. And we, I think it's more of being dependent on the grace of God more than anything else. You know, I want, I want to be good. I want to be perfect, but I cannot. And I need to live under the grace of God. And I will disappoint people. That's why I've always tell people, don't look at me because I'm just a human. I, I try my best. I live under his grace. But I can't be that perfect, you know. But isn't that, I, if, I, if I may, uh, Dennis, when you say you, yeah. you tell the people to don't look at me, but you, we, we do look at you. I, I say we, I'm going to say collectively. Yeah, yeah, I personally yeah. don't, obviously. But, you know, go to, say, Victory Green Hills because I'm here. But I used to, by the way, Dennis. I was yeah. in Victory Green Hills for many, many years. Um, I, how, how, how do you say that phrase when, in fact, that's what we do? We do look at you on Sundays. We do go to you. We do give our yes. time. So we do yes, but, act. But I... Yeah, I, I think I cannot be the object of your faith. I did not die on the cross for you, Mo. You know, right, but I don't think anyone ever yeah. says that, right? I think still Jesus is clear center, right? And yeah. and I don't no one prays to Dennis. We pray yeah. with you, not to you, right? <laughs> yeah. So we all know this. However, yeah. it is still so damaging when the leader of say well, fine, leader is always gonna be Jesus, right? But maybe you're the yeah. uh, on earth leader does yeah. something really vile and mm. really sinful like to expect us to go oh okay well you know but because Dennis he's human don't worry about it we're, we're still okay yeah. it, it, it's hard it's hard to swallow that it's hard to swallow yeah. yes I know you're just a human being and you'll be imperfect but there are levels of sin I think right yeah and and when you start touching the upper echelon of those levels and you're the guy that we're going to see every Sunday and we're giving not just our time and our hearts and our money to you to your organization but it really can be shattering. And if you're not strong enough in the head, that can really, really mess you up. So it is yeah. a responsibility. And I don't think, hey, don't look up, don't look up at to, you know, don't look at me as, as a thing. I, 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 you seem like a good guy, but when I hear that, I, I go, oh man, but that's not the reality, Dennis. The reality is I do look up to you. You are important. Yeah. You and could that's why it's, yeah, your life. I, I, and I think that's why it's painful. Yeah, and, yeah, and I think I would live with the consequence of that because I chose this profession. I became a pastor, and people would look up to me. But at the same time, I think it is in that culture when, like, like what happened to this pastor in New York, you've created the celeb celebrity culture, as if that pastor is not gonna fall, right? But because of how the church was designed. And how he started branding himself as such. Now, even somebody like me, who's not a Hillsong member, yeah. wants to get into the scoop of you know what what happened. You know, right, right, but right. In reality, you know, he does not affect my life, right? But if I fail, if I fall, I know my congregants would be the one who would suffer most. Right. right. Not you, Mo. Right. You know, it's gonna be the people I pastor, and I'm going to live under that consequence. But yet, I also understand. And this is the culture that we're trying to build, that the church is a community of grace. You know, yes, there's truth that I've fallen into sin. Yes, I've hurt people if I do that. But at the same time, the gospel is also about a message of grace. And so I think there's always a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth chance. Now, if it gets to be a criminal act, now that's different. I think you cannot put that under the rug and say, you know, nothing happened. You know, we right, just right, discipline right. him a bit. No, if it's rape, the pastor needs to go to jail. You yeah, know, yeah. it needs to be exposed to the congregation, not to the entire world, not in social media. And I think that's where the problem lies, where people now feast on the sins of others because it sells. But technically, nobody cares about me except my congregation, right? And I think the people who will be affected would be the people in Green Hills and not the people in the States or even in Makati or Pasig, they don't really care about me. They never th thought about me. You know, right. they don't wake up saying 
he's my pastor. I'm not the pastor, right? So I think it's, it's, it's in that communities of grace where we can find healing. And as much as possible, I think the church has been maturing in that process because we're not used to it when, when pastors fall. It's like, wow, this pastor fell. What happened? Right? Mm-hmm. And we don't know how to react because of, you know, we preach against it. And now something right, happened. Right, right, right. So it's, 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 it's really hard. It's traumatic. You know, and I've been traumatized for many years, yet it's a humbling lesson that, oh, I could be one of them if I don't take care of my marriage. If yeah. I don't take care yeah. of my relationship with Jesus. That's me, apart from the grace of God. You know. Brother Jay, what are your thoughts on this? Huh, many thoughts. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, thanks, Mo. I, I, I think, you know, what I love about this topic is that the more we hide sin, the more it grows. It's like a wound that you band aid for a long time. It festers, it becomes an infection, you die. And I, I just want to, you know, this is not bad. Th- these are the things, the hard discussions we need to talk about to put things into light. And hopefully things will be better. And um, yeah, dude, I mean, I'm a sinner. I'm a <laughs> sinner every day. One of the biggest sinners, every time I, 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 I preach on stage, it's like, oh, man, I don't know why I'm preaching. I'm still one of the biggest sinners in this room. Uh, but, I mean, it really sucks. <laughs> it I, really I, sucks. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, Brother Jay, no, like, okay, so when Dennis said, hey, if it's, if it's a crime, if we're, we're talking criminal, these yeah. pastors or priests or whatever should go to jail. Uh, another deflating reality is that we just see sometimes, and I'm going to now pick on the Catholic faith here. We see a lot of these priests who get involved in some of the more heinous things. And you guys know what I'm talking about, child molestation, <laughs> stuff like that. They don't go to jail. They get reassigned. So what is that? How does that, as a person who is trying to build my faith and my trust in this system, yet, you know, it, it's going unpunished? Those yeah. are the things that you, you're going to get me to go out. I'm out. And I'm going to take as many people out with me, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. By, uh, me physically removing my family from this organization or using my venue or Dennis, sorry, social media to lambast it because yeah, you yeah. are so vile and heinous that I don't want anybody. I'm not talking about you, Brother J, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, Pre- yeah. like that who have been, been caught in those situations all I seem to hear is they're just getting reassigned to other countries or other parishes and not really being put behind bars. If I'm in, incorrect about that, please you know, feel free to correct me. But that's been my impression. Yeah. I think it was really um, pronounced with the movie Spotlight. I don't know if you watched it. Yeah, of course. Great movie. Uh, I mean, I loved, I mean, as a, as a human being, it's really great movie. I mean, like, dude, it was really well made. Um, uh, and I tried. I started researching after that. Like, why? Because I was, as a Catholic, I was really hurt by what we did. Even if I was not the leader, I'm part of the family, you know. So, uh, so I tried understanding. And it is just me understanding what the leaders at that time tried to do. So here's the thing. And then let me go to Pope Francis. Um, so what I think was, we had less understanding of the mental issues. So we tried to practice compassion and mercy during that time. But you see these these sin, for example, pedophilia, that's a mental concern. Nobody in their right mind does it. So I mean, I studied um, behavioral science. So, okay, I understand. It, it is really bad. Um. It's like the worst sin. The two worst, the, the two worst crimes in in a jail or in a prison system. So, de ba parang even in a prison, may hierarchy yan. Murderer sikat, drug dealer sikat. The worst sinners or the worst prisoners, the one nagugulpihin papatayen are mother killers and pedophiles. Absolutely, so, absolutely, right. These yeah. are the worst people. So, so I think. Really, honestly, as a Catholic, I'm really sorry. We handled it badly, badly, and I have no, you know, reputable, correct answer. But now, um, as Pope Francis came in, that's why he's very polarizing within the Catholic because he says, 
homosexuals are welcome, but the moment he finds out or there's a report that there's a priest who did something like that, you're in prison. But because as was Pastor Dennis was saying, um, those who preach, we are judged more harshly. I mean, I remember uh, we had a meeting with the diocese here in the Manila, in, in the Philippines, and Cardinal Tagle was saying if there is something, a concern with the priest, like for example, a priest is just being VIP, you know, call us, we'll handle it. Because as a priest, you should be the servant of all, and it's easier said than done. <laughs> so we're trying our best, brother. Um, hope we do better more. And I think that's the best answer I can give. Um, I just want to add something as a Catholic, I think, because I also understand like what Mo was saying, right? Um, there was a report that came out recently. The Vatican released a report on a former cardinal who, yeah, was engaging in these, you know, sexual sex abuse scandals. And there was a whole report that was released on it. Apparently, this is the first time that such an extensive report was released. And in it was exposed, you know, not only what this cardinal, who has been defrocked since, by the way, uh, was involved in, it also involved how the church was just dropping the ball constantly on following up on these allegations, how, you know, this cardinal, despite the allegations about him, kept getting promoted. So I think what makes it worse, aside from just the sexual abuse being vile, was the covering up that happened within the church, right? Um, and I mean, this goes up to like the Pope levels. I mean, you know, Pope John Paul is implicated in this even. Like it's pretty... It's, it's heavy stuff. And so when I look at something like this, and you're right, leaders are held to a higher standard as they should. Yeah. Do I expect them to be perfect? No, because at the end of the day, they're also human beings. However, what I want to see when people fall like this is I want to see true repentance and I want to see accountability. And so if there are legal repercussions to what they did, although I'm not going to be in a position to condemn them. And I know maybe as someone who is not in the faith, that's a little difficult to understand because obviously there's evidence and, you know, everything that supports that this person did this, but then, however, I'm not supposed to judge this person. I'm not supposed to condemn this person, but that is the Christian teaching. But I am all for the consequences that follow this person's actions. Definitely. I Definitely. also find comfort in knowing that if they don't get it here in this life, we have a God who is just and fair, and everyone is going to get their due at some point. Um, but I think I also want to ask, you know, like what Mo is asking, which is, okay, that's that, but then are we then just supposed to take it? Yeah. I, right, yeah. Right. <laughs> if we take it to any other scenario where we put people at a higher standard than, say, your common citizen, um, yeah. The, the damages, the branding even of whatever organization you're in, in, involved in, it's, it's going to suffer and rightfully should. You know, it's, it's not like I know we're supposed to forgive, but let's take a, a school setting. A teacher is held at a higher moral standard than your normal guy working a nine to five job or normal girl working a nine to five job. And if they ever decide to get involved in a relationship with a student, even if it wasn't a minor, that dynamic, just that break of trust is something that if exposed can ruin your school. Even though that one human being decided to do that, the entire brand can suffer from it, and it should, right? Yeah. And maybe we should ask the churches, the denominations, the non-denominations, Harold, to <laughs> vet their people at a higher standard, right? Um, Because you can really cause some lasting slash permanent damage, as I am living proof of that, 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 that your stuff isn't as what you say it is. Yeah. yeah, you know, all of these things that happen in the Catholic Church has been so damaging. Many people have left the church because of this. I remember when I was coming to the faith, I was talking to a friend about it. And when I told him that I was converting to the Catholic Church, he said to me, oh my gosh, I could never be part of a church where the priests abuse little kids. Like that was his idea of the church, right? right? And I think with something like this, with a report like this coming out of the Vatican, People are saying, okay, there are pros to this as well. This is a step towards the right direction. We are trying to be more accountable. We are cleaning house. But is it too little too late? I don't know. 
I'll you know I'll give you credit. I'll give you credit that and 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 what uh, Brother Jay said regarding say Pope uh, Francis being much more. Gosh, transparent. I mean, if you go back, right, and I don't know the dates and I don't know which specific popes, and you guys might know this more than me, clearly, right? But there have been popes that murdered each other in the past in, in an attempt to, to, to get in power. If that happened in 2020 in the smaller world we live in now, you're really screwing up your career, <laughs> right? I mean, just yeah. imagine if we found ourselves uh, where it was maybe, you know, a thousand years ago, where they're now just poisoning each other's wine glass just so they can get into that seat. Well, you're you're now you would have killed your faith at that point. No one would go never build another church again. It would be pointless at that point if it happened now. No. So, so we are moving, I think, towards the right direction regarding exposing it, being transparent, uh, finding legal uh, repercussions towards it. Right. That's a good thing. Um, you're going to have people like me who still are going to be deflated and maybe forever. But I think your faith and, and getting people to get, be, get back into it. That's, that's the right way to go. You know, it's, you guys are on the path of, I think more positive outcomes than say, again, if it happened thousands of years ago and there was Twitter back then, <laughs> it, would have been, it would have been a problem. But uh, there was no space. And I'm sure there was, I'm sure there was, but we have it on video now. <laughs> Look at <him. laughs> the guy, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more graphic now and a lot way more uh, detailed, I think, than say back in the day. So, my point is, it's always been around. It's always been around. Problems like this, this topic probably been discussed in year 200, not just yeah. 2020, uh, right? But um, I think it's better now, even though the, we can sit here and say the crimes are pretty vile. It's better. Yeah. Instructor H, magsalita ka naman. No, oh, uh, basically, I, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Now, first, we don't um, put our life of faith on some people's life. Even though they are our church leaders, kasi they're still human beings at pwede pa rin sila mag-commit ng kasalanan. Ang, siguro something na I just want to add on to that is because Satan, when he works, ang mas target na yung mga may position. For example, King Solomon. So nung na-deceive na si King Solomon, he committed the sin against God and even worship other gods. Yung mga Israelites, yung mga followers niya, or I mean yung mga um, uh, na ginogovern niya, yeah, ay nag-commit na din ng same sin. So, ganun kasi umatake si Satan na mas gugusto niyang atakihin yung head, someone who has a high position in the church kasi mas madaling mag-fall um, away yung iba pang mga members nito. But I think also I want to add aside from what you've already mentioned a while ago bukod dun sa accountability and bukod dun sa um, repercussions ng mga actions natin if this is a criminal act na dapat humarap ka sa trial and sa law at kung dapat ka makulong, you have to. Um, I think one thing na dapat na uh, ako gusto kong idagdag dito is that we also have to check upon ourselves because we are all sinners. At if I commit something that is sinful, then ang importante sa Diyos, yung mag tayo. Um, I think you've mentioned a while ago about true repentance. And the way I look at it, true repentance is when you are not able to do the same sin again. Actually, yung goal, mahirap siya, but that's the goal, na hindi mo nagawin yung same sin na yun kasi alam natin that it is not pleasing to God. And at the end of the day, our life of faith should not be based on something that is changing, not on the people, not on the culture, in the tradition, but base it on something that does not change, which is the truth. Yung katotohanan hindi naman yung nagbabago. This is the word of God. Kaya um, I personally believe na our life of faith should be based on the word of God para ito yung mas magiging, if I may say, magiging stable yung life of faith natin at hindi siya magbo-waver when things, negative things are happening around us. I, 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 okay, yeah, Harold, I think that's great that, that you said that. Um, it, I, I think we all like a comeback story, right? But I am not going to give that opportunity to our leader of a church. If he screws up, he gets no forgiveness from me. And I'm sorry, yeah, and I'm sorry to say, well, I mean, I, it's because there is so much on your shoulders. There just yep. is. And when you screw up, I just, I mean, fine. You said it earlier, right? We have a God who will forgive and who will judge. You can get yours there. You're not going to get the forgiveness from me, though I love a comeback story. Uh, Hayden Coe is a really good example, a good friend of mine. We all know the story, right? 
we all know the the mistakes and how he's turned things around through his faith to become this amazing individual. At least that's what we th- that's what we feel, right? I mean, at least I I think he is, and I love that story. I think a lot of people do, but he was never a pastor, and. I am not going to give that consideration the, oh, look, you turned your life around if you started at that position. So, yes, we're all humans. And, yes, you guys are going to mis- make mistakes. You, J- JP, Harold, Dennis, you guys are going to make mistakes. But there is a limit to that. There's a finite. There is a number you cannot cross. There's a line you cannot cross that's going to get me to go, oh, OK, well, you know what? You're just human. Everybody's not perfect. No. Once you cross that line, you're out yeah. and you should be out. It should be out forever. And I don't care how many times you've asked for forgiveness. And I don't care how, you know, what repentance crusade you're going to do to get there. You're out because you had a greater responsibility than all of us. Yeah. You, you exploited them. Yeah. I, yeah. Mo, but uh, being out is another thing. Being forgiven is another thing. Yeah, no, I'm not going to forgive you. And you I think, think, that's between you yeah, and God. Like, you guys can forgive each other. You're, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're doomed forever in my book. And I know yeah. as many people yeah. with me on that. As, but the, as yeah. And I think, but the problem with that culture, Mo, would be what if it, like, apples to apples, you're more influential than me. You've got millions of followers. Sure. You can shape lives. I hope. Right? <laughs> I try. <laughs> Whether positively or negatively, but the yeah. influence is there. Yeah. What if you stumble? What but if you I, but made I something so stuff. stupid? And I don't sell myself as somebody that you should look up to for moral code, for a path towards uh, paradise. I don't. I, I sell myself as kind of despicable. <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm kidding. But you know what I mean? Like you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. you're getting. You know what you're getting when you f- click follow or yes, turn on but, the radio. But I think. In principle, it's the same. There's you've got some ethical things that you try to influence people with, and we have some things also. And but for I don't, us, I don't when find it becomes a higher standard, Dennis. I'm sorry to cut you off. Huh? I don't find myself at a place where I am at a higher standard. This is a classic DDS uh, uh, situation, though. No? President Duterte will say something so vile, right? <laughs> and his fan base will be like, eh, ikaw, ikaw, uh, no, hindi ka nagmumura. And I'm like, I'm yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you, uh, I'm not him. I'm yeah. not in that position. And if yeah. I were, I wouldn't do that because I understand the responsibility on my shoulders. Yes, yeah. I have a million followers on Twitter. He's got a hundred million followers. His role is different in this world than mine is. Hence, it's not a fair playing. You, you, it's not. It's not an apples to apples thing. Because he is the president. You are the president of your little thing you got going on. Yeah. And, you're and, little- I, and I think I'm going to live till the day I die with that consequence, with that, uh, with that guilt. Of it's not good enough. Made- and, and, and it's not just me. It's going to be my wife who's going to live in the consequences of my action and my kids. I've got two daughters. And if I committed a sexual sin, it's like giving them... One of the worst things in life to have a father who committed yeah. adultery and had sexual sins with a congregant, right? And I think that's the consequence that I've got to live with. But it doesn't mean I cannot move on. I'm not saying that, hey, Mo, please forgive me so I can move on. Yeah, but yeah. if we create a culture where, you know, I've canceled you already because of that one mistake you made, then I think that's the world we live in. And the Bible shows us that's the world we live in. We could have canceled David when he murdered Joab and committed adultery. Yet the Lord says he's a man after God's own heart. Why? Because it's a story of redemption. And I think for most of us, not for most of us, for all of us, we live in a sinful world. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. The only difference between the community is in a church community, if done right, it's going to be a community of grace. That I, and this is what I wish for myself. I wish yeah. to feel this way about it. You know, I wish to hear what you're saying, and I and I, I soften my stand as I listen to you talk, which means you're an effective pastor, by the way. <laughs> but I I soften my stand, but I think I, I would like to take the next step and look at it that way. No, 
again, again, not not to really hit the president because I don't know if you guys love like him or not. But I, I every time I guess somebody from his administration on my radio show, I ask them, please make me like him. Tell me, Tim, you've been there, right? You've been there when we've had uh, 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 an admin guy, whether it's a senator, whether it's MMDA head, whatever. Anybody that has been involved with the president or is involved with the president, I say, do me a favor. You know, I hate him. Please change my mind, though. I'm open to being, you know, influenced towards the positive regarding him. And nothing they ever say ever does work. I mean, <laughs> it's never, it's never any, nothing's any, it's never effective. But I want to be open to it. And I want to be open to be wrong here tonight regarding my stand on this, which seems to be a very aggressive stand. Right? I want to soften up about it. Um, whether, Dennis, it's 45 minutes of sitting here or whether it's something way more in-depth that's going to take years, I would like to get a point. I would like to get to a point where what you guys are saying is true. That, hey, you know what? There is redemption. There is. It's just, you know, man, not right now for me. And that's not based on one incident. It's based on a handful or maybe yeah. even a little bit more than. And I think every pastor or every priest who's listening to this podcast, guys, you know what you signed up for, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All eyes are on us, yeah. you know, yeah. and yeah. it's not an easy job. It's a thankless job. Yet at the same time, there's a moral obligation for us to stay pure and holy before God. And it's not going to be that easy. And that's why you've got to build your relationship with Christ and surround yourself with the right people because it can happen to the best of us. It, it has happened to the best of us, right? So, so I think, and, and for the congregants who might be listening to this, help us. Don't treat us like celebrities. Don't put us on a pedestal, you know? Uh, you know, we could be your friends, you know? And sometimes, you know, that's the hard part. Sometimes, Mo, when I became a senior pastor, it's like, it became different. It was different when I was a youth pastor. Then I became a senior pastor. I go into uh, a conversation, tone changes, right? It becomes yeah. serious. Oh, senior yeah. pastor is there, you know, pastor is there. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> cigarettes, they, they, they chew it inside, you know? So it, it's funny. <laughs> and I smile because, hey, I live in your world. I know your world. I've been to high school and college, you know? I'm exposed to all that. And it's just funny how you change your your demeanor because a pastor is there but it's just but you i don't think you can ever get rid of that i think that's going to be true yeah, and it doesn't matter so. if you are christian or catholic or whatever i saw my pastor because we go to a christian church here you know like uh you know like a born again church whatever denomination you want to call it and we saw him at the grocery and it is a celebrity moment i mean even though i see him face to face every sunday when you take it out of that environment because champion you could shake the pastor's hand on sundays you could say hi you can ask him to pray for you or whatever Pag nakita mo sa grocery, iba, iba na yun. Eh. Oh, it's the past. It's not eat thing. It's more, uy, 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 kinikilig, you know, uy, uy, si pastor. It, it is a celebrity thing. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, and we know that even in Catholicism. Listen, I've been to Rome. I stayed in the Vatican. I stayed in the Vatican upon invite. I've met the Pope. They wow. were. Wow. Really in fact, you know what's funny? Because when my mom applied for La Salle, I went to the LSU, you know. When my mom applied to La Salle, so it's my grades, application, Picture ko kasama si John Paul. <laughs> wow. In a picture, it's like I, I dare you. Know. I dare you to not accept him. You know, gonna... <laughs> so I've been there. I stayed in the Vatican for months. You know, within its quarters, played basketball with the Cardinals. You know, did stuff like that, right? And, and this is me really being pumped up about Catholicism in my younger years. Um, geez, what was my point? Oh, my point is, they're celebrities. They are. They really are. And when they walk by. If you see the cardinal walk by in his red, you're like, oh, wow, look at that. Bigger than life. Right? Oh, my goodness. We celebrate. We celebrate it for a reason. And and um, you can never get away from that, Dennis. Well, it doesn't matter what denomination you're. You can't get away from it. You're the leader of your church. You're big time. You are big time. And I love that you appeal to your fellow pastors on this show now to understand that and to understand the need, the mandatory need to be as – Sinless as possible, even though that's not that's not uh, realistic. No, stay away from the bad stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. I if, think like I'm sorry. Go ahead, Instructor H. Go ahead. No, uh, I just want to add something to what Pastor D was um, explaining earlier. I think as Christians, we live in a culture of forgiveness in in, in our churches because we were first forgiven by God, and that's why we have to forgive others as well. At um, if I can just add dun lang din sa napapag-usapan kanina, na uh, so lahat na lang ba ng sin ay dapat ma-forgive natin? Actually, um, the scripture tells us that all the sins can be forgiven, pero hindi dapat siya excuse 
for us to, ay, pwede naman pala ako mag-sin except for this one sin. This is not a license for us to commit sin, but it's more of a warning for us dahil merong grave sin for God and that's the blasphemy of the Spirit. Before, nung nabasa ko yung sa Bible, I was thinking, ah, so hindi ko lang mumurahin yung Spirit. That's it. But when I get to study the Bible, I understand it deeper na ang ibig sabihin pala nito is that we should not do things against the work of the Holy Spirit. For example, at the time of first coming, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, um, nakita doon na yung Spirit of God descended like a dove upon Jesus. So ibig sabihin, the Spirit of God is within Jesus and yung mga bagay na ginagawa ni Jesus could be considered as the work of God and the words coming out from Jesus are the words of God. So makikita natin dito na yung words na nagagana kay Jesus is the truth at dahil doon masasabi natin na Jesus is a true teacher. Siya yung nag, nakakapag-testify ng katotohanan. And that's why the disciples call him as a rabbi. Kasi siya yung nagtuturo ng katotohanan sa kanila. And bakit ko to ikinoconnect dun sa blasphemy of the Spirit? Because if the people during that time are working against the work of Jesus, who is, um, we know na ginagamit ng Diyos during that time, it's considered as the sin against the Spirit. And so when we talk about... Um, the words that we teach to the people, uh, especially to reflection ko to sa sarili ko, I have to be very careful because ito yung kasalanan na hindi kayang patawarin ng Diyos. If I teach lies, meaning I add or subtract dun sa will ng Diyos according to His word, then I could be committing this sin and uh, mahirap talaga siya. Mahirap siya. Um, just like sa Bible sinasabi na yung good tree hindi siya makakapag-bear ng bad fruit and yung bad tree hindi makakapag-bear ng good fruit. So dun sa fruit natin, yung words and actions natin, ito yung magiging basehan sa atin once we, um, once we have that time na i-judge tayo ng Diyos sa kung ano yung ginawa natin dito sa mundo. So really it's um, a reflection for me na as a Bible instructor, I have to be very careful with the things that I teach to the people, if this is still according to the word of truth, because this is what God would want me to do. So yeah, that, he's our uh, resident Bible nerd, um, instructor eight. <laughs> no, you know, no, 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 you know what? Thanks so much for clarifying because you're, I, I've read that before. I've heard that before. Sin against, I know, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Like, yeah. Um, it, and this is like the sin that can't be forgiven. And I'm like, yeah, what is that? Um, Okay, that's, but I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, if that's what it is, say, let's lay it on a table. Like, there's that sin, which you just talked about. There's the infidelity to a spouse. There's the um, sex abuse. I feel like in, I mean, sin is sin, but in a spectrum of sin, that seems benign. But you're saying, like, that's the sin that God is saying in the Bible, that it can't be forgiven. Yes, so you're not like in the Bible. Oh, I just find but, that so interesting. I wonder if it's relative, no? Because I don't mm-hmm. feel like that's that big of a deal, right? Right? <laughs> right? 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 Yeah. Well, maybe it's more of... It's it's very mababaw kung first time lang natin siya maririnig. But we have to know that God is the Word. At yung Word na nagagalan sa Diyos ay yung katotohanan. Now, ngayon, if we try to distort the Word, the Word of Truth... Ano ba yung ililid na tayo nito? It will lead us to death. Um, I just want to go back to the example of Jesus. So, tinuturo ni Jesus yung katotohanan, which is siya yung nagpo-fulfill ng pangako ng Diyos at ang dapat gawin ng mga tao nun ay maniwala sa Kanya para makareceive sila ng salvation. But kapag na-distort na yung word ni Jesus, kapag na-distort na yung katotohanan na nanggagaling sa salita ng Diyos, Eventually, yung mga tao, hindi maniniwala dito and therefore, they won't be able to receive the salvation. E tayo as, um, as believers of God, ang gusto natin, maligtas tayo at maligtas yung mga tao na kasama natin at yung, actually, the whole world. Kasi yun naman yung will ng Diyos for us to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So, kaya, it may sound mababaw at first, but really, when we go deeper in the Bible, mas makikita natin yung malaking effect nito sa atin. Yeah. Ah, parang what's at stake is salvation. Kasi with, yeah, what That's you're right. talking about. Which is the most oh, important thing, right? Okay, yeah. can I ask a question to, to you guys? And this is going to be a little bit off topic, but I just want to make sure I get this in. When you see people of, you know, leaders in in, in a faith, like say, pastor, sino si stop it? Stop it! Yung earthquake, sino yung kiboloy ba yun? Kiboloy? That his name? Sorry. You know, that guy, he's got the private jet. He's got the laughable kind of takes on 
uh, real world issues and problems. Do you watch him and then you go, man, you are ruining it for us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot of mic time and a lot of TV time. And he'll sit there and say, ah, na, ano mo, nung naglindol, sabi ko, stop it! At nag-stop yung lindol. It's like, okay, all right, listen, understand that the earthquake doesn't mean any harm. It's just all tectonic plates. You know what I mean? It's just, it means nothing. It means no, there's no motive to destroy, right? It just is, we built on top of it. Hence, that is what comes along with that. No? Um, when you see him do that, right, are you facepalm emoji? Uh, no, he's non-denominational. <laughs> Harold, explain. Like, uh, yeah, I know, but he, okay, fine. He's non-denominational, but he associates himself with the administrator, the president, and and he commands a large group of people. I would say, you know, I don't know what his numbers are. No, <laughs> yeah, millions, I'm, millions. I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, yeah, I'm assuming yeah. he commands a pretty strong audience. Yeah. But but I don't know that he's different from you, Dennis. You see, you get what I mean. Like I'm not informed enough. I just think he's your pal. Like, do yeah. you ever watch him? Harold J and go. No, text me to Harold. Oh, no, no, no. Text me to Harold. Ah, I just, I just, what's wrong with you? Same denomination, sila ni Harold. Non denomination, sila. But, but I mean, I, I, as much as we're going to laugh about it, because I think it's funny, because he's, he's hilariously stupid. Um, crazy. crazy is a very good word. What do you guys feel about that? Because he does command and he. In my opinion, a person who's not involved, I think he's an equal to you. Does he hurt your brand? Does he hurt your position? Does he hurt your profession? Does he hurt your goal? Because he is so comically detached. Uh, I mean, first of all, I don't say to the world that I'm the second coming of Christ. Sure. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, the I mean, appointed, the appointed, son, appointed of Christ. son of God. Sorry, sorry. Appointed yeah. son of God. Son of God. Yeah. Oh man, I mean. <laughs> Honestly, like more than anything, I'm worried for the souls of his followers. Right, right. Like, ah, yeah, more than anything. That's that's what I'm more worried about. <laughs> yeah. But see the I power, think, uh, the fact that you yeah, worry about yeah. the people that he preaches to just again reiterates what we were talking about earlier, that you are above the normal person. You are at a position of, you are at a position of such responsibility that, we worry about the souls of the people who listen to him, and only him is making those remarks. Right? I mean, yeah. he is, it's coming out of his mouth while we are judging him. We're also worrying about the millions of people that listen to it. That yeah. just shows yeah. again how amazingly powerful you are, whether it's going to be slash celebrity, slash whatever, that you have to almost be freaking yeah. sinless, right? That's why he's Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? You're right. Like we've discussed, you know, the many sins that our leaders can fall into. But at this point, I'm kind of thinking about how perhaps the biggest sin that they're gonna have to answer for is stopping people from coming to the faith because of their actions. You know what I mean? Yeah, because people are looking at them and thinking, oh, I could never be part of this church or I could never be a follower of Jesus. I mean, if this kind of person is proclaiming to be a person who follows Jesus, then, you know, just there's no credibility in right. this. Yeah. Right. And that is perhaps right. like, yeah, the biggest thing that they're going to have to answer for. But then again, you know, this is the hard part. Like the teaching is I cannot condemn these people. I need to give that to God. And again, I think I just keep coming back to like, I can't have my faith like depend on people because at the end of the day, they're human beings. I have to base it on something that doesn't change. And I think Instructor Harold made a really good point earlier. I was thinking about, yeah, what is the one thing that hasn't changed in all the years that Christianity has been around? It's the Bible. We talk about Bible quite a bit on the show. Yeah. We just did a topic on why the Bible, which is, an ancient book is still relevant today. And yeah, I'm kind of reflecting on that right now. Yeah. That's the one thing. I, I, think, I mean, I love what, uh, so a few years ago, I think 90s, they interviewed Charles Barkley about his lifestyle. And he said, I'm an athlete, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, not a role model. Right. Yeah. Here, here comes LeBron and says, I'm more than an athlete because LeBron says that, you know, 
he has a brand. I'm more than an athlete, uninterrupted. Everything he's doing now, the LeBron movement is is just really amazing. It makes me realize, reminds me that as long as you have, maybe you're not LeBron, maybe you're not a pastor, as long as you have um, influence over at least one person, you're a leader. Mm-hmm. So everyone has to like do their best. And I guess Mo, the best answer that I can, I think we, for me, this whole conversation, I love it. We need more of this. What I can offer is friendship. Yeah. yeah. That I don't have all the answers to the life, but mm. let's be friends and understand life problems together. Yeah. 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 No, and I appreciate that. Like, I appreciate, again, all of your your uh, your points here that you guys are making. And I'm glad to be here and kind of experience it. Because, again, the, the, the further you go away from it, the harder, the stronger that wall that you build. You no. Know? Um, and it takes conversations like this. Yeah, I hope. I, I mean, gosh, Sam, please invite me again. Like, I, you know, I, I got another. I got another thing to talk about. <laughs> but I'm also not here to lambast. I'm not here to to kind yeah. of. Just, Thank you for yeah. being honest more than anything. Yeah. yeah, and 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 again, I I look up. Yeah, I've just met you guys, but I I you can it, it resonates that you guys are good people, and this is the danger, right? Is I then put faith in these good people, and my problem in the past was the good people have then hurt me or have done something that that makes me lose my belief in it. And and I know that this is the kind of the whole topic of the show, right? Is what happens when that happens to you. And I think individually we're all going to react differently. And I have reacted very cold and I've reacted very about defensive and, and kind of angry. And other people can forgive and other people can understand. And other people like Dennis said can understand the grace involved in 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 everything. So um I think this is a good conversation, uh, Jay. I, I I really enjoyed it, and um, if it sparks more conversation in your own inner section of your friendship, your barcada, or that little corner in Starbucks that you guys are gonna, uh, you know, break this down, then then great, Good good for everybody. Good for society. Good for all denominations and the non denominations. Just it's a good conversation to have. Oh, I'm so happy you joined us and had this conversation with us. And I also want the people to know, like, I mean, Mohan jokes about it. Like, guys, I'm not going to be here to be like profane or whatever. But this is a side of Mo that I wish more people saw because I got to see it while I was working with him off the air. You know, he's a sweetheart, loves his family. You know, he's so much softer and nicer. And like, I don't know, I hope people got a glimpse of that today. And I'm so tickled that we got to talk faith with you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. if, If Sorry, I don't. But think about what I've said this whole hour. What am I asking? I'm just asking you guys to be good people. People who are responsible. I'm just asking you to be good people. I'm not saying that's all. You guys to understand the power behind the position and then be good at it. That's all. I'm again, I'm not sitting here to poison minds or to, to it's I just want you to be good because like me, who has been felt like I've been backstabbed. There could be millions of me who react that way. And all I'm asking is to be better. That's that's my battle cry. Guys, be better. You're you're more important than I am, no matter what. I mean, maybe in the eyes of God or, or Jesus, I, we're all equals, but in real society, you know, tangible touch, feel, look, senses world that we live in, you are way more important than I am. Even if I'm more famous. <laughs> you're way more important than I am. <laughs> so, I love I it. it be good i love it i love it i and you know what i'm gonna pray that you're gonna be able to kind of rekindle this relationship with god right. i mean your episode 40 feeling ko talaga may something okay let's have episode 41 with me back and just talk about the cheese mist that got me there <laughs> <laughs> let's have that 41 uh, yeah. <laughs> no, really. Come back anytime. Come back anytime. Uh, it's so wonderful to have you. Tell us about your show. Good time, still very much happening, right? Really not much. <laughs> it's not the place for it. Yeah, no, no I mean, yeah, I've got a podcast. It's called Good Times with the Podcast. Uh, I take uh, calls from people all over the world, and it, it's a busy show, and it's people who, um, it, you know, sometimes the topics are not so far off from, from this. In fact, my last episode, I had a guy who called, I got, forgot where he was from. And he said his, sorry, I know this is, we got to go. Right. But he had a doctor who he went to the doctor for a medical problem, but he didn't have money 
at the time. He did, I guess they didn't think it was going to cost that much. So the doctor, who was a Christian, said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll I'll take care of it. But hey, maybe you want to join our Bible study. So the guy was like, oh, well, I'll, I'll go because the guy hooked me up. So he went there, and he's been part of the church now for a few years. And he's like, how do I get out? Like, <laughs> how do I get out? I've been here two and two and a half years with, with these guys, and, and they're good people. And I don't want to break their heart, but this thing for me, man. And so that's the advice. He was how to get out of his church without breaking the heart of his pastor. And, and my, my advice was, listen, of all the people that I've met in this in this world, and, and this is not saying the Christians are better than Catholics or Muslims or whatever. It is the born again Christians, you know, that are the most forgiving about stuff like this. You know, they actually if they if you leave, they'll they'll even wish you well. Hey, yeah, hey, wish you well. Maybe come back one day. No worries. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> And I said, you know what? They will understand. You're scared about a group of people who are not really that angry at you if you pull off something like this. And but anyway, that's the point. The point is, it's a show like that where we, I I'll talk about anything, anything. Sometimes it's mm-hmm. though, so I'll give you that. But it's <laughs> about anything. And um, if you want to give it a shot, it's called Good Times with Mo. It's the podcast. And of course, we have the radio show on Magic eighty nine point nine, which of course is also called Good Times. That's on. Um, Weekday, so Monday to Thursday on uh, Magic eighty nine point nine, which is a good show as well. If you if you want to give that a look, yeah. I loved having you today. Thanks, Mo. Thanks. And yeah, thank yeah. you, thank you everyone for joining us for this conversation. If you guys want to get in touch with us, we have an email: the narrow door podcast at gmail dot com. Check out Pastor Dennis over at Victory, Brother Jay Paul over at the Feast, Instructor Harold at New Heaven and New Earth. And if you're watching us on YouTube, we have all the good details in the show description. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.